Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story, which is titled My 24 Female Boyfriend 24 Male is a Workaholic, Totally Anhedonic, and Something of a Sexist. Where do I go from here? Hi. We're friends from college and we've been dating for a couple of months. We're final year med students, so we're both really busy preparing for something similar to the US MLE. And for anyone that's not in the know like myself, <laughs> it means United States Medical Licensing Examination. Honestly, I want this relationship to be my last one. I love him, I value him, and I usually enjoy being around him. I do my best to take care of him. I bring him snacks when we're at the library. I cook for him sometimes. I offer to help him out with his assignments so he can have some extra study time. I listen to him and always affirm that I'm proud of him and that I love him. I do all of this out of love, of course, but a part of me wishes that I could receive the same treatment. He barely says I love you, almost never takes me out on official dates. The last one was more than two months ago. Doesn't like PDA and he tends to dismiss my feelings. At first, I try to calmly talk about how I felt and what I needed. But he always says that's how he is and that I'm expecting him to be someone he is not. He is really stressed about the upcoming exam, which is in September 2024, and he can spend hours talking about how much he has to study and how he cannot spend time with me. It's a big deal in our country, and it's not uncommon to go into hardcore study mode this early. I understand where he's coming from, but not going on a date for two months? We spend nearly every day together, but we usually sit and across each other in the library, not talking obviously, or at a mess hall grabbing gross cafeteria food. Sometimes we go out to eat during our break times, but he always pressures me to eat quickly and says we shouldn't have eaten out, because eating at the mess hall is faster. Sometimes I'd cook and offer to bring him food, but he would refuse and offer to eat it another time, even when we'd agreed that I'd be cooking for us. I don't know how many times the food I made for him ended up festering in the fridge. He tells me I'm too emotional and that he's doing what's best for both of us. Whenever I try to tell him something's hurting me or that I'm feeling the lack of something, he just says I should get used to it. I tried to initiate a breakup a few times because I felt like there was no love, but he refused every single time. Of course, I love you, he says. I just don't express it very well, he says. He says that he expects me to know that he loves me and he doesn't like to express his feelings often because it feels like he's being questioned. He just doesn't have fun with anything. He doesn't listen to music, he isn't into sports, and he just doesn't really have any hobbies. I do all these things, and whenever I talk about something I'm passionate about, it's always, oh, that's useless, or, oh, maybe you should do that after the exam, or some other snide remark and joke about how what I'm doing isn't really important, and that the only important thing is the exam. He watches YouTube shorts whenever he wants to decompress. Another thing is that he's something of a sexist. He polices my clothes, so I don't really listen to him. Doesn't let me talk to the male waiters if I'm eating with him. Doesn't let me give directions or help men if he's with me, and expects me to give him updates and reports whenever I'm out. We almost always go 50-50 on dinner and other purchases, and he expects me to buy all the sex-related items, only twice in literal months. I'm starting to get really fed up of this. So much so that I'm actually starting fights quite often. During these times, he literally cuts off all contact. Sometimes for days. I cannot even eat because of how sad this makes me. He never listens when I say something makes me sad because I should just deal with it. But I have to do anything and everything in order to accommodate him. This is essentially what it boils down to. He will cut me off mid-sentence and not respond because he has to sleep or study or whatever. I do my best not to interfere with his studies, but we're in a relationship and I have expectations. How can I get him to see that I'm hurting and that I need to invest in us a little? If that's not going to happen, how do I sever my attachment to him and go on the rest of my life in a healthy way? I love him very much and the thought of leaving breaks my heart, but at the same time, I'm just not very happy. I got to the middle bit there where it says you tried to break up a few times because you felt there was no love and he refused. Like... <laughs> He just went, nope. And you went, all right then. And this is just one of those stories that, you know, the more and more we got through it, I just kept thinking, what are you actually getting out of this relationship? I, I know medical exams are extremely stressful and require a lot from just from the stories that we've read in the past, but neglecting your relationship 
all the sexist stuff you told us as well, there's just red flag after red flag in this one, and it just sounds like you'd be so much happier out of that relationship. But Initial Donut says, sorry to be so blunt, but he doesn't care about you. You cannot convince someone to care about how you feel when your feelings don't matter to them. To break up, telling that this relationship isn't making you happy and that you're breaking up with him. He doesn't get a vote. Don't explain or negotiate. Tell him you need space and will reach out if you want to be in contact again. Nina says, do you love him like you love a stray puppy or do you love him because he makes you feel that you can do anything, achieve anything and that your simple existence in the world is a wonderful thing? Because how you're describing your relationship doesn't sound like there's love anymore coming from him and the way he treats you. I wouldn't accept that from a friend, much less my life partner. Samantha says, I wish and hope one day soon that you love yourself. He does not love you and no matter how many hoops you jump through, he never will. When do you put yourself first? Rarely are men cured from misogyny. If you don't put yourself first, then others never will. You're making sacrifices for someone who only wants you to be miserable. Honestly, when do you start loving yourself enough not to tolerate such horrible treatment? You don't have magical powers to make someone love or have empathy for another. He isn't capable of it, nor does he think you're worth the effort, especially if he thinks women are inferior. Next comment says he doesn't have to agree to break up. That's not how it works. Dump him and move on. He can complain all he wants. It's not your problem. Tell him it's over and just leave him and stop talking to him. You think this guy is great, but he's not. He's a total dud. Doesn't let you talk to men. Give me a break for fuck's sake. And he doesn't have any interests or hobbies. Okay, sounds like a wet blanket. What are you even getting out of this relationship? None of that is normal. You could date someone a million times better. You're just hanging on because you have no basis for comparison, apparently. You could date someone that is actually fun and makes you feel loved and isn't controlling. That's not even a high bar. So after the comments, OP comes in with her update and starts off by saying, we broke up today. He said I was too emotional and high maintenance. I was looking into the pockets of a jacket he let me borrow in order to give it back. And I found a piece of paper. On it, there was a list of three girls, including me and our information. Like it was a table of basic personal info, like our year in school, our city of origin and our friends. I know the other two girls. I took the paper and put it on top of the bag I'm going to give him. Any other advice is welcome. And now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story with an update as well. Titled, Former Friend Wants to Rekindle Our Friendship After Suffering a Bereavement. I'm Reluctant. My 27 female friend, 23 female, and I are both in our 20s. We've been friends for five years or so. A couple of months ago, I made the decision to cut off a close friend of mine. I won't go into any specific details, but whenever we argue, she will always bring up something she knows will hurt me. She's admitted she deliberately will bring up something she knows will sting when she's angry to get at me. An example was her laughing and calling immature for getting upset over little kids, for being upset after a horrible day at my job. I work with some very vulnerable children and have left work in tears that day. The last argument we had, she accused me of something pretty horrible. And that's when I decided I was done. She also will often ask to borrow money and get shitty when I ask her to pay it back and is constantly asking me to drive her places and can be snarky if I say no. Her mum passed away a few weeks ago. She knew she was dying but it happened quicker than she expected. She's always been much closer to her dad however and I know it's still a horrendous thing to go through. I did send her my condolences and left it at that. The funeral was this week and she messaged today asking if we could get back on better terms. She admitted to being an asshole to me and but said she really needs support at the moment. It sounds horrible but I honestly don't want to rekindle this friendship. I overlook so much with her that I normally wouldn't. I feel so guilty. Any advice to broach the situation is much appreciated. I'm at a loss. And I think from my perspective and what I would advise to you is not be that friend. It just, it sounds like that you think that you have to be her friend just because of what she's been through when, you know, she's, she just sounds like she's emotionally using you and basically treating you badly and not in a way that a friend would. But a commenter says, you're not obligated to rekindle the friendship. It sounds like you only considered it because you think you should, not because you want to. Opie says you are 100% correct. If her mum hadn't passed, I probably would have completely ignored the message. 
Another user says people like your friend like to use socially bad situations to reel people they have hurt back in. She likes to make you feel bad, takes your money, and likes to criticize you for your work. Do not let someone like that back in your life. She will use her mum's death to make you do things you don't want to do and will continue her abusive ways and use her mum's death to justify it. Do not feel bad about keeping people like her away from you. She does not deserve your friendship. Do not feel guilty about putting you first. If you feel like ignoring the text or do so, just text her back and let her know you're busy but sorry that her mum passed. Opie says that's exactly what my other friend said when I asked her for advice on the situation. She said, how she has the excuse of grieving to justify behavior and I won't be able to argue back without being seen as the bad guy. Outrageous Oranger says, doesn't sound like a friend I'd be open to reconciling with either. Grief is hard, she'll be okay though. If she doesn't have a support system, it honestly sounds like that's because she's a bad friend. You don't owe her your friendship. Of course, be kind to her when telling her no, but try not to feel guilty about it. Obi says, she does have family support and other friends, but I was one of her closest and defo one she went to when the going got tough. She was a good friend at times, but has a very short fuse and can be vicious when angry. And one more comment from Deadpan Alice, who says, honestly, judging from her past behavior that you've described here, she's likely looking for an emotional sponge. Maybe she wants to rekindle the friendship because she's genuinely sorry about how she has acted in the past, but more likely it's because she intends to use you for emotional support. Obviously, this internet stranger can't possibly know her true motivations, and neither can you. But whether she's genuine or not is perfectly acceptable to not let her back into your life. So Opie comes in with her update and says, I, 27 female, was blown away by all your advice and responses, so I wanted to update you all. I followed the advice of the majority on here and let my former friend, 23 female, down as gently as possible. I told her how sorry I am for her loss and that I can't imagine how hard things are for her, but I couldn't see us going back to the way we were. I said how a lot of hurtful stuff went on and how I don't think I can offer the type of support she needs at this point in time. She actually reacted much better than expected and wished me good luck with everything, which broke my heart a bit as, despite the difficulties, we did have some great times too. But I know deep down it was toxic. Someone mentioned being an emotional sponge, which was super accurate. Lol. I am one, and I do tend to put others' feelings ahead of my own because I know how it feels to feel low and don't want anyone else to feel that way. Thank you all so much for all the advice and responses. I'm honestly blown away by how many I got. I'm trying so hard to get better at setting boundaries and sticking up for myself. It's hard due to my experiences growing up, but today was a start at least. Thank you all again. I definitely feel like I've made the right decision despite it being a hard one. And I'm quite surprised that she took it okay as well. I thought, you know, in the update, we're definitely going to see some kind of explosion going on. But what do you guys make of this situation? Do you think it was handled the right way or not? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story from the Am I the Asshole subreddit. Now, our next story comes from Throwaway Gifting one who says, Am I the Asshole for refusing to adhere to my sister-in-law's Christmas gift list? For Christmas, my 30 female husband, 30 male, and I are hosting my parents, my brother Chris, 34 male, his wife, Amy, 33 female, her two sons, 6 and 4, my sister Lucia, and her boyfriend Alex, 30 male. The background to all this is that Amy complains about every gift she is given by any of us. Every Christmas she makes faces and snide remarks about the things she's gifted. For example, last year, me and my husband gifted Amy and Chris a joint present of an expensive coffee maker which is the same one we have at home that Chris loved when they visited. Amy's only remark, not even a thank you, was, oh well, this isn't really for me, is it? And to make a great show of being annoyed that she didn't get a separate gift. A few days ago, Amy included the whole family on a group email with a Christmas list for her and the kids, saying that she would only accept gifts from this list. On her list was expensive perfumes, links to expensive clothing items, and designer handbags. I was livid. My parents were offended as well, but didn't want to say anything to Amy, but I wasn't going to hold back in the face of what I felt was grossly entitled behavior. I replied to Amy's email saying, I wouldn't be purchasing anything on that list, and if she wanted to shop for a Louis Vuitton wallet, I was happy to put her in touch with my saleswoman. I also said that if she didn't like what she received for Christmas, she was welcome to just leave it at my house. Chris blew up at me saying Amy was just trying to make everything easier for everyone by giving suggestions. I disagreed and told him, I think Amy was just trying to find a sneaky way to get a few things she normally can't afford for free, which in my opinion is not in the spirit of Christmas. I think she's being extremely childish. 
Her parents think I shouldn't have said anything, but Lucia says I absolutely should have because she wasn't going to be spending hundreds on Amy's Christmas list either. Was I the arsehole for not going along with it? Edit 1. For everyone asking, yes, Amy drinks coffee and uses the coffee machine. 2. No, she and Chris do not gift anyone anything of the value of the items on her list. Chris does the Christmas shopping and our family is big on adult gifting. We buy things for the kids, but we tend to get each other like Christmas hampers for couples, jumpers. I bought my mum a teapot one year, things like that. Certainly nothing in the price range Amy put on our list. The entitlement is absolutely astonishing there. I can't imagine writing a list and sending it to a group of people and saying, just, I only want stuff from this list, guys, only. It's okay if, you know, which I've done before, people have requested me, they said, oh, could you write like a, 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 some gift ideas of what you want? Because I'm a very difficult person to buy for, it must be said. And sure, I've done that, but I'm always like very, very careful about price ranges and stuff. I'm, there's no way I go over a certain amount because it just doesn't feel right. But these days in our family, like the adults, you know, might buy like a, a small little cheap gift, a fun gift or something like that, a little gadget or, but we don't go wild anymore. We just don't need to, you know, more about getting together and that kind of thing. A bit of a relatable situation that this, this brought into my mind. This was like, I don't know, had a bit of a situation with my dad's side of the family who had someone send him a list of potential gifts without any sort of warning you know didn't usually get him gifts anyway but sent him a list of of stuff a family member my father you know just recently got back in touch with and then just out of nowhere sent him a list of christmas presents that this person wanted and they were quite extravagant christmas presents i must add and was all like what the hell i mean i don't think he got anything off that list in the end but he still got her something that was quite nice and she lived like elsewhere in the country so they wasn't gonna able to see each other at christmas and all this kind of thing but but she did send the gift down to to my dad and you know she knew about him because they've been speaking for a little while and she knew he had gave up smoking a couple of years prior but she sent him like an ashtray <laughs> and we couldn't really work out if they was just taking the piss or not but because another year they re dad received like a gift of some new shoes which were the wrong size and both of the shoes were like like the left foot <laughs> I don't know how you do that. It was a strange one, but we did find the gift quite funny, actually, to be fair. But Mysterious Silver says, not the arsehole, but I have to ask, what kind of gifts do they give to the rest of the family? Does she give dollar store gifts and ask for Louis Vuitton in exchange? We just want to know how much of an arsehole your sister-in-law is, lol. Terry Sash says, not the arsehole. Tell Chris and Amy that since you can't meet their gift expectations, you won't be exchanging gifts with them going forward. Tell them to please not give you any gifts because you won't be giving them any. You'll just be giving gifts to their kids, but you'll be choosing that are within your budget. Lots of people suggesting like noisy toys below that, like a toy trumpet. <laughs> that which reminds me of a story of entitled people that done something similar along these lines. And the guy bought them a load of air horns and silly string and like just loads of stuff to mess up the house. But Emma KT says, not the arsehole. Might be in pre revenge subreddit actually. Emma KT says, not the arsehole. Would I be right in thinking you guys are quite well off compared to her? And that she therefore has decided that you should be spending a lot on her. Opie says, my family is comfortable, yes, but we're not massive spenders at Christmas. The adults anyway. Kids get a lot of stuff, but adults we don't really make a big deal. Little Runaway says, not the arsehole. When people get to a point that they practically demand a specific gift, they completely lost the plot. When you get a gift, you say thank you and move on. Even if it was a joint gift. No one is entitled to a gift. Someone did a lousy job raising her and, and your brother doesn't sound much better for taking her side. And one more comment from Alarming Reply who says, Gift giving is totally out of control in my opinion. If your brother and Amy want to spend lots of money on giving gifts, that's their choice. They can't dictate how much money other people have to spend. It's your wallet. You make the choice how to spend your money. I'm not even sure if it's worth a conversation about this. Encourage your brother to buy his wife everything on our list, but you are not planning on participating in that. Pick a couple of things out for the kids and don't worry about the adult's drama. Maybe Amy is greedy. Maybe she is just a person who loves expensive things. Who knows? Who cares? Let your brother deal with that problem, not the arsehole. But now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. Do you guys have any like different traditions about gifting family members? you do it at all i know a lot of people don't do it for adults these days let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love your support your time 
always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. Truly, you are absolutely amazing. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.